Yo, what's going on guys? I'm Sam. I have been waiting for this day for so long. In my hand is the rumored, the leaked, the hyped, the all elusive iPod Touch 7. I'm gonna take it out of the box right now if you're excited for that. As always, drop a like down below. It seriously helps me out and hit subscribe so you can stay up to date for the iPod Touch 8 in like, I don't know, 15 years from now. All right, so here is the new iPod Touch. First step, I, I sort of cheated and took it out of this earlier, but if you go ahead and unwrap this bonus plastic right here, uh, packaging pretty much identical to how it's looked, I think, forever since like the iPod Touch fifth generation, but it turns out uh, I kind of exaggerated earlier. It hasn't been just two or three years. It's been almost four years since this iPod Touch was updated, and now we've got it in hand. So first up, let's peel off this plastic right here, and then it's going to sort of crack open as they always have. I remember as a kid, I was terrified that it was gonna fly out while doing that, but they do have the trademarked little like fake plastic screen on here, and you'll notice because this is the new iPod Touch, this is proof, it has that brand new TV icon found in iOS 12.3. So this is brand new, also has the brand new news icon. That is a dead giveaway whether or not you're looking at an iPod Touch 6 or 7. Let's go ahead and pop this out of the packaging right here. Also, another terrifying part of this process. I feel like the packaging could have gotten better over the years, but it just hasn't. I'm gonna set that to the side just momentarily, which is literally just in my pocket. Down here, you're gonna notice some big differences from the, from the iPhone. Number one, guys, uh, no power brick. You would think that even spending this much, you would get a power brick. I mean, you get Apple stickers with the iPod Touch quick start materials, so like that's nothing uh, out of the ordinary. Now these are literally just earpods, no AirPods, and not even a remote or mic on these. They are straight up the cheapest headphones that Apple can make, which, you know, makes sense for a $199 product, but Still not great. And as I mentioned earlier, no charging brick with this, but just a single USB-A to lightning cable, the same one that we've seen for years as well. The real story begins right under here as you get to peel off the sticker. I really wish they did this for the iPhone. It feels really nice to take out of the packaging. Uh, and then if you go ahead and pop the iPod out just like this, wow. Uh, this is a tiny little product. I have not actually held an iPod Touch in my hand for years. Uh, and this is pretty crazy. It is super nostalgic right off the bat. I'm gonna go ahead and power it on. Hopefully we have some charge on here and we do. I mean, design-wise, you kind of forget how iconic this was back in the day. I feel like every single kid at my school had one of these. Uh, even some adults that I, I knew, I believe, had this as well. But there it is, iPod on the back. You got your little Wi-Fi antenna box up there. Camera, microphone, and flash. And then at the bottom, you got, you know, some other regulatory info. It looks like it says designed by Apple in California. And then, yeah, here's the front. Whoa! Uh, the screen is on. I have not seen an iPod like this in forever. And I think I accidentally selected uh, a different language, so give me a sec. All right, everything looks good now. Let's do English, United States, uh, and the setup process isn't gonna be anything special, so I'll catch up with you guys when I'm on the home screen. All right, it's done being set up, about to go to the home screen on the iPod Touch 7, and here we are. Wow, there's a new TV icon, the new news icon. It's crazy how close together all these icons are, but it's really bringing me back to when this used to be my main device, and honestly, I, I kinda miss it. Like, it's nice to be able to go into settings and reach the top corner of the screen. That is uh, something I can barely do on my 5.8 inch iPhone sometimes, and I, I think that Apple's gotten away from that. I feel like one of these with an all screen design, if it was you know edge to edge, would be incredible. And obviously it'd be a little bit more expensive than 200 bucks, but initial impressions, wow, this is super good. Let me pop open the camera now and see how it looks. Uh, not gonna be too artsy with this photo, but let's take that, and uh, yeah, it's a camera. Um, it's all right. I'm a little scared to flip it around and do a selfie. Uh, all right, all right. So they take really fast, which is great because it's kind of low quality, but uh, detail's not great. Let's be honest with ourselves, guys. Detail's not gonna be great on this camera. Um, yeah, looking at this, I already know how the rest of the photos are gonna look as well. You do have video too. Uh, yikes, very blown out initially, and the iPod's already getting super hot because of all of this, which is, is pretty interesting. But yeah, take a little bit of video. I don't know. You can see it looks like it's off an iPod Touch, uh, and I would definitely be able to look at this and be like, yeah, not off, not off a newer iPhone by any, any means. But yeah, it, it's got the camera. If you want to snap a quick pic, it's there. You'll be able to still capture that memory, but do not expect to be 
wowed or blown away by really any aspect of this iPod, I would say, other than the processor. So I just installed Geekbench. Let's go ahead and open it up right here. You can see iPod 9, 1. The app hasn't even been updated to support the new iPod officially yet, but the results will still be identical. So let's go ahead and run this benchmark and see how it pans out. So the iPod Touch is all finished right here, 1900 for the single core score and 2622 for the multi-core score. And while that looks impressive if you had, let's say, an iPod Touch 6 or 5th or 4th generation, uh, compare it to just a few years of progress and the numbers on the iPhone XS are out of this world. You can see the difference right here, but there's also a bigger difference, you know? You're paying five times as much for this phone as you are for this phone, so maybe the performance is fair after all. But with the 810 Fusion chip, you'll be able to do so much more than you were before, and your iPod Touch will be able to run new softwares and new stuff that previously it would have been limited to because of the older processor. Now for me, I'm not going to be switching to this iPod full time because I'm a little bit out of like the prime age range. I already own an iPhone as well, which is, you know, better than the iPod Touch in every way. However, I'm going to be personally using this iPod Touch. I will not be returning it at all because I'm going to be using it as a secondary device. Uh, and you know, in case my iPhone would run out of battery or primarily to test iOS betas on considering that iOS 13 is either already out when you're watching this or about to be out in beta one form in a couple of days. And and it's like the perfect device to do that. Um, I really like the iPod Touch. I've been a proponent of it forever, and it is finally here. I was telling you guys from the beginning, I feel like there's no way Apple could just kill this device off, and, and now we have it. We have the iPod Touch, and in no way, shape, or form is that a bad thing. All I know is that in the short time I've had with the iPod Touch, I've really enjoyed it, and there's definitely some heavy nostalgia tied to it for me, uh, but I don't mind that at all. In, in fact, I actually really, really like that. So should you buy the iPod Touch? Well, if you've been waiting forever, if you've been watching those rumor videos for like two or three years, yes, this is the time to buy. I have no idea when the iPod Touch is going to be updated. I joked it'd be like 15 years before we get the eighth generation at the beginning of this video, but honestly, guys, uh, it could be another three or four years until we see an updated iPod Touch. So now is absolutely the time to buy if you've been waiting. If you want a secondary device, this starts at $199. $199 for a device that can run iOS 13, which is crazy. Like that's a really good deal to me if you wanted to test your apps on a device or something like that. $199 if you're younger, that's relatively affordable. Might have to save up for it for a while, but that is like the cheapest that iOS devices can get. And it was just updated with the new A10 Fusion chip. So let me know down below in the comment section whether or not you're gonna be picking this iPod touch up. Are you happy? Are you grateful that Apple finally brought this back? I know I am for sure. That is gonna wrap up this unboxing and should you buy video, drop a like if you enjoyed it, hit subscribe for more and uh, cheers to the iPod Touch 7, a product that so many people said would never exist, and uh, here it is in the flesh. Anyway, see you guys later.